commandments that they had never kept in their own land. And he says, and they enter into the Euphrates by a narrow passage of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. So the Lord calmed the waters of the, uh, basically like the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, man. When you go around the bottom of Africa, those waters are, are rough waters. So the Lord actually calmed those waters so they would be able to travel without without being destroyed, man. Because those are rough waters, man. So what the Lord did was calm those waters so they could travel. And it says, for through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. So it took a year and a half to go down from the Euphrates all the way through the bottom of Africa to the Americas. It took a year and a half. Even when Solomon was king, when they used to come over and uh, get, get certain materials from over here, that whole journey would take three years, right? And it says, for the Most High showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through the country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region was called Asher, meaning the unknown land. And that land, well, at that time, was the na land the name was Canaan, man, which we call it now America, man. So our ten tribes that came over. That's why we go back here. Ezekiel 37, it says, Moreover, thy son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and, and for the children of Israel's companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. So that other stick, the other plank, was for Joseph, right? The children of Ephraim, right? The, the uh, other, the other uh, ten tribes, man. Which we know them as, we call them the Northern Kingdom, man. You know, the Latinos and the Native Americans, man. And it says, <laughs> it says, uh, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? That's why we have the sign out here. So when the children of Israel walk by in the spirit, the Lord will show them, because on the sign we have their, we have their biblical names, right? We have their biblical names, and then we have the names that the slave owners gave them. So when they walk by and see the sign, they will see, they will see, uh, 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 those names that were given to us by the slave owners. You will see Puerto Rican, you will see Sim uh, Dominican, you will see Negro, you will see Mexican. That way they, they can see it and they will relate, right? It says, and when thy children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, will thy not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the ten tribes, and Salaki, and the tribes of Israel's fellows, meaning his companions, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah. So he's going to combine them two sticks, man. Right? It says, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. It says, and the sticks were upon thy writer shall be in thine hand before thy eyes. So the Lord says he's going to put them two sticks together, man. You know, and that, and that will help, help them uh, come back. Basically, we got the sign up there that's just like, a, uh, it's like advertisement, man. You know, you want to get something off real good, you advertise, man. This is advertisement, man. You know, guess what it is. No, it's advertisement, man. About the 12 tribes, man. And in this particular time we've been in since then, the tribes have not been together. It's been a split. But what the Lord is doing through the Spirit, He's bringing, he's bringing us back spiritually and, and linking the tribes back together spiritually, man. And I'm going to read that. In uh, Amos, uh, this is uh, 
Amos. I started Amos 9 and 9. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel from among all nations. Because we are scattered among all the nations on the earth. So when you sift something, like when you sift flour, when you're sifting, what, it, what that process is, is that bad flour is not going to be mixed with the good flour. Right? The good flour is going to come through. And the bad flour is going to stay. So that's what the Lord is doing through the scripture. And me coming out on the highways and byways, right? He's sifting through the house of Israel. He's finding that, that, good, that good flour, which is the elect. Right? And that bad flower, who are the sinners, they're going to basically die by the sword, man. It says, like a corn is sifted in a seed, which the seed is like the word. And that's what, what we use, man. We read these words, man. This is the real baptism, the word, man. You know? It says, Shall the least grain fall upon the earth? It says, All sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Because a lot of people don't think anything gonna happen to them. They think they just gonna live here in America and get old and die, and that's it. No, man, a great, a great uh, uh, a reckoning is coming to this place, man. The Lord is getting ready to allow this so-called white man to bring terror on the nation, man. Two-thirds of our people. He says they will be killed by the sword. That sword meaning famine, pestilence, uh, martial law, man. Race riots. The chip. And ultimately, thermonuclear destruction, man. That's going to be the sword that a lot of our people to third ain't gonna die by man. The sword, man. Thermonuclear destruction, man. Thus said the Lord, thus said the Bible. It says, in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, I will build it as the days of old. See, so through this word, through that seed, the word, the Lord is bringing us back together. That's why when you go, you look at uh, certain camps, you see uh, change of faces in these camps, man. You see people in these camps, they don't look like your traditional uh, Negroes, man. Some look like so-called white men. You have the, you have the, you have the uh, Instacart, the so-called Mexicans. Even the so-called Puerto Ricans, man. You have them in the camps, man. You know? You have them through through the camps. So what the Lord is doing through the word, he's bringing us back together. You know? He's closing these breaches up. Bringing us back to being one house instead of a separated house, man. A house that's divided. You know? News gonna start raining. That's all good. So that's why we come out here to tell the 12 tribes of Israel these scriptures are for them, man. These scriptures are for the nation of Israel, nobody else, man. Let me get that in. Uh, this is Leviticus 26 and 46. These are the statutes and the judgments and laws which Yahweh made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. By the hand of Moses, man. In these, in these statutes are for Israel, man. In Israel only. It didn't say not. It didn't say Esau, right? It didn't say Moab. It didn't say any of those other nations. It said these laws are for the nation of Israel, man. And see, when you got the, you have that that, that Christian church doctrine. They think that the Lord came for everybody. And that's not true, man. They can't show you that in 